Now, just um, obviously, you mentioned that the players that are out injured. Is Jake Clark sort of still one of them? Yeah. Um, Jake... Jake felt uh, an issue in his hamstring on Friday before the game. Um, he was fit right up to the end of um, of training and uh, and then felt something. And at the time, we didn't want to take the risk. Uh, we've since gone away and had a scan. Um, the, the length of time was a little bit disappointing. So we've gone away and took a second opinion. At the moment, we're just waiting for that second opinion to come back to make sure uh, where we're at. But I would say if you miss him for the rest of this month, and I'd expect him back at the start of September. Now, we know we've got three very, very good senior centre-halves and two good young ones. Jimmy come in, scored the second goal and was very, very good at the weekend. I thought Jimmy was good midweek as well. So um, you know, we're very fortunate uh, as a championship club to have the level of centre back that we've got. And uh, also, we, we, we Chris and Luke, and I know you mentioned after the game at the Middlesbrough game that perhaps you kept Chris on longer than the sports scientists would have liked. Um, is the issue from is it a recurrence of anything to do with a hamstring, or is it? I know you mentioned a fatigue kind of issue. Well, look, he would have never been involved on Tuesday, and we would have always took a view. I think if you sit. If you, if you understand what's working behind the scenes here, we obviously had lost the last four or five home games of last season, and this was the first home game back. It was very important that for our fans, for the belief of the team, that we that we got, got a win last week. I think we all felt that as QPR followers and, and people behind the scenes. Now, going into the game, Chris and Luke, were co- of course, they was at a risk. Um, but they want to put their bodies on the line. But when Chris came off the pitch at the end of the game, he was absolutely fine. There was no issues. The next couple of days, he had a lot of fatigue. He wasn't due back on the pitch to the back end of this week anyway, because we knew he had to have a recovery. And now it's just assessing when we put him back in. Do we take him up for a long travel on the train and, and on the coach on the way back? Or do we get him ready for the two home games next week? I think that's where we're at. I've not made a decision on that yet because it's not solely my decision. And the same in terms of Luke. Luke played the game and was fine. Uh, I asked him a couple of times in the second half and he was fine. And then after the game, obviously, he gets the natural fatigue of, and we need to pick their fitness up. But it was a risk that we all took in terms of getting the result, the players and the staff all on the same page. And uh, we got a really, really important win. And I felt we wouldn't have got that win without them two players. So in that sense... It's disappointing. It's disappointing, really, uh, the last few months, the injuries that we've had behind the scenes. And we have to we have to eradicate that at the club. You know, we, it's unfortunate. Like, you lose George again to a tackle in the first minute and George continues to play on the whole game. And the next day, he, he, he's, he's in a boot. So uh, we seem to be getting really bad luck at the moment. We're probably running up 40% of what the QPR team could be. Um, mm which obviously makes things a little bit difficult for everybody. So are you are you saying then that this, this, there is a, a maybe an outside chance that Chris and Luke could be involved at, at Sunderland? Chris more than Luke, um, and I'd expect Chris to be back for the games next week, definitely. Uh, Luke is touch and go. We've sent Luke for a second opinion as well, and I'm just waiting to uh, chat to the doctor because we were off yesterday, and uh, there's been a couple of things going on in the background um, with maybe an incoming. So I've not had a chance to sit with a doc yet today. So I wouldn't want to put a time on that right now um, in terms of Luke's return. Is that the hamstring as well that he was suffering with in pre-season? It's not the same, though. No. no. Okay, fair enough. And uh, with, with Kenneth Powell as well, is it a similar thing? He's just for two? Kenneth will definitely be back. If Kenneth don't make the squad uh, this week off the bench, he'll be back in time for Tuesday night to play from the beginning. So again, it's just that where's he at and what's the uh, the lesser evil, if you like. I would say right now, Kenneth would play on Tuesday rather than Saturday. Okay. How's he found the kind of introduction to English football? I'm guessing the Championship's a bit, not a step up, but a bit more intense than the uh, Eredivisie? Yeah, everyone's different, you know, like, so Kenneth obviously came over, he was living in a hotel for a period of weeks, which is difficult. I'm doing the same now and it's a bit cabin feverish. And uh, in the last couple of weeks, he's got his own place, which is really nice. He's, 
he's uh, his girlfriend, uh, his partner, she's expecting in the next couple of or two or three months. So he's, there's been a lot of change in Kenneth's life. He's a lovely young man. I think he's played well in the two games. It's certainly a level up physically to the area division. But we've seen a lot of players come from Holland in both the Championship and the Premier League adjust really well and go on to have successful careers. And we're hoping that for Kenneth as well. And um, again, he finished the game last weekend and you should have seen how happy everyone was in the changing room. And then obviously the next day you get a phone call that, you know, two or three are, are feeling the effects of the game. That's natural early in the season, but it seems like we can't catch a break at the moment um, as a club. And it's important we, we we try and to solve that because we do have a squad that I think is high in quality, but low in numbers in some positions. And it's important that our main players are fit more than they were last year or second, certainly the second half of the season. I want to see a time where Taylor Richards is playing with Ilias Chair, Chris Willock, Lyndon Dykes, um, Tyler Roberts, Luke Amos, Sanfield, Stefan. I want all of them fit all at the same time because I'm greedy. I want to have a position where we can play a back three of Jimmy Dunn, Jake Clark, Salt and Rob Dickey because I think it would be an excellent back three. I don't know when I'm going to see that, unfortunately. So I'm asking everyone to just be patient, keep supporting the team. I do think the team we've got on the pitch is more than capable of going to get a result in the in the games we've got upcoming. But we're going to need everyone to stand up and be counted for.